So the first thing we gotta do is dice our butternut squash to roast it in the oven. So the easiest way to do this is first by cutting it in half. Make sure your knife is sharp because otherwise it won't work. Also, if your knives are really dull, then you can just poke a couple holes in the squash, put it in the oven for around 10 minutes at a 400 degree Fahrenheit, and yeah, just take it out afterwards, and then you can cut it easily. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is cutting off the top end. Um, we don't really need this part of the squash. And then I'm going to do that to the other half, just taking the top or the end piece off the squash and just disregarding it in the compost. Okay, so now we can get to cubing our squash. Um, I'm just taking one of those halves, cutting it in half yet again. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to do some, take one of those halves of the halves, <laughs> do some singular um, strips within it, like a puzzle almost. Um, and then we're going to flip it around and just cube it, <laughs> essentially. Um, if your slices are more rectangular or too big, you can go again and just chop them up in half. That's what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be super um, anal about it, I guess I would say, just because it is going to go into a curry. So depending on how big you want your chunks of squash to be, that's how you should cut them. And um, here I'm just showing you guys the same process, but with the other half, which has seeds. So I'm taking the seeds out. Uh, you can roast these. These are really good with some olive oil and salt. You can spice, add, add a lot of nice spices like cinnamon, or you can make them herby, or you can make them spicy. Um, yeah, definitely seed save. I highly recommend. And um, once you scoop them out, you can start cubing this half of the squash as well by doing the same method. But I'm also showing you guys a different method, just if you guys want to cut it differently. Um, yeah, either way works. It really depends on what is best for you. Okay, so now we're moving on to putting it onto a baking sheet. I'm just drizzling on some olive oil, around one to two tablespoons, uh, depending on how large your squash is. And then I'm going to add some salt here. And one ingredient I didn't show was cinnamon, but that's completely optional. I like adding cinnamon to my squash. I think it really adds to the flavor of it. All right, so now I put the squash in the oven at 400 degrees. And we're going to bake it for around 40 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown and a little bit crispy. So we're moving on to our red onion here. You can also use... Um, a different kind of onion, this is one of those dishes where the type of onion you use doesn't really matter, um, essentially. It doesn't matter at all. So we're cutting in half, and then I'm just liking doing a nice method of giving it really thin slices, cutting it the opposite way, and that way I just get a really fine dice, and I don't have to worry too much about chopping it a bunch and making it really messy. Mm -hmm. This is just fast and easy. I personally like cutting my onions this way. I'm just showing you the other half again now, just thin strips and then turning it around and dicing it. So the next thing that you want to do is to mince your garlic. I'm just showing you it here. <laughs> Not the cleanest way of doing it, but essentially I um, minced I think around three cloves, three or four cloves, yeah. Um, I love a lot of garlic, so go all in. Mm. Next, we're doing ginger. For aromatics, I like to cut my ginger into really small pieces. I don't really like to eat big chunks of ginger, so I would recommend really, really finely chopping your ginger. Same with our serrano or ch red chili pepper. Uh, you can also use a jalapeno, whatever kind of spicy pepper you have on hand. Um, you can take some of the seeds out. It really depends on your spice level, how much you can handle. So the seeds, the more the, the more seeds you have, the spicier it will be. So keep that in mind. 
Um, but yes, please finally chop this. Otherwise, you're going to get a large chili pepper piece in your mouth when you eat this curry. Okay, so now I'm heating up a pot on a stove top with olive oil and um, one to two tablespoons again. We're gonna wait till the oil is hot before we add in our onions and garlic. Cook this for around two to three minutes before you add in your ginger and pepper. Um, and once you add in the ginger and pepper, then cook that again for a couple more minutes. Um, I'm just giving it a really good stir. Um, don't want it to burn, so just mix it frequently. Okay, so here are just a few um, veggies that we're about to start cutting. And we're going to first start with our tomato. I like to add three to four tomatoes in this curry. Um, it also depends on the size. These are kind of on the smaller side, so I'm doing around four. I think I might have only shown like two or three um, in this video, but I'm doing a method where I kind of like the onion where I cut it in half and then give it some slices and then turn it around and dice it really finely. Um, this also doesn't need to be perfect because it will be cooked in the curry um, and it can be in larger chunks, so don't worry too much on the method. And I'm just repeating this process with the other tomato of slicing it um, like four ways on one side and then repeating the process again in a diced mode. And once you're done dicing all your tomatoes, you can place them all into your pot with the onion, garlic, ginger, and pepper. And we're gonna, yet again, uh, give this a really good mix, saute it a lot. We really want the aromatics in the tomato to bring out a lot of their flavors. And while that's cooking a little bit, make sure it's on a low heat so it doesn't burn. We're going to go ahead and julienne our bell pepper. If you don't know what julienne means, it means cutting it into strips, essentially. So I'm coring it. And then we're going to flatten the bell pepper and I'm going to cut it into strips. These are really long, so I'm going to, after I slice them, I'm going to cut them in half just so we don't have super, super long chunks of bell pepper. Um, and I'm just repeating the process with the other half. And yeah, I really like having strips of bell pepper in curry. I think it's really fun and it's kind of how a traditional curry normally would be like. They normally don't dice their bell pepper in a curry. It's normally in strips, so I wanted to replicate that. And next, I'm also adding green beans later on in the curry, so we're just going to roughly chop these into like threes. Um, we don't really want super, super long chunks of green beans, so I like to just do a couple of chunks. Okay, so I added here a, like a couple cups of water. Um, and then some veggie bouillon paste, which I did not show. Then I also already added in the bell pepper. I don't know why I didn't film this part, but those things have been added. And then also, once the bell pepper has been cooking for around 10 minutes in the broth, I'm, I'm going to add in my green beans and some coconut milk. And once your curry has been cooking for at least 20 minutes, you can add in your cilantro um, and spinach. And for this one, I actually added some rainbow chard, which is what I had on hand and which is what the pantry had on hand. So uh, that's a perfect substitute for doing like this recipe. Like even with kale would be great. And I also added some lime juice in. The lime juice really brings out the flavor in my opinion. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to be cooking up some tofu in a separate pan. So I'm pressing it with a towel. You don't want the tofu to be wet. You really need it to be dry. Otherwise, it's going to crumble and break and won't turn out the way you want it. And so for this 
recipe, I'm cubing my tofu. Uh, you can obviously cut it in a different shape if you want, but I think cubing it really is good for this one. Yeah, otherwise, it will just fall apart. And I'm just putting a little bit of oil in the pan because we want to lightly fry it first before adding in our soy sauce or tamari, depending on if you're gluten-free or not. Um, so we want to get it crispy on both sides. And that usually takes around five minutes if you really, really want it crispy. Um, and um, you can also add a little bit of sesame oil and rice wine vinegar if you really want it to have a lot of flavor. I like to do that sometimes, but also the curry has a lot of flavor itself. So you really just need to add a little bit of soy sauce and you're going to be good to go for this recipe. Um, and I'm just like continuing cooking it um, once I've added the soy sauce until it's nice and fine in the way I want it. Okay, so we're almost done with our curry. I am now just putting in our roasted squash into the pot along with our freshly fried tofu. Um, and make sure you give that a really good mix. And, um, yeah, this is exciting. We're almost done. I know it seems a lot, but it's, it's really not. And I'm just adding some extra chard here, but that you really don't need to do that. It's pretty unnecessary unless you really want a lot of your greens in the curry. Um, but, um, now I'm just serving it up in a bowl. I'm making it pretty with some extra squash and enjoy. Enjoy.